goodness, girls, that marvelous golden pineapple juice from Hawaii brings you that sweet, tall, stalwart chap, Al Pierce from Hollywood. Uh, just a moment here, lady. Well, who told you to announce this program? Where's Wen Niles? Keep your funny hat on, Mr. Pierce. Everything's under control. I'm Wen Niles' wife. Oh, well, that's so. Who sent me over to handle this little thing? This little thing? Do you realize that right now we have millions of people sitting out there with their ears glued to their radios? Well, that's one way of keeping them there. <laughs> And besides, you haven't even given Wen a contract. Well, you just go home and tell your husband that I'm going to get another announcer. Let him put that in his pipe and smoke it. Meanwhile, the show must go on. Wait till I see that Wen Niles guy. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, well, friends, things are kind of slow out in Hollywood this week. Gee, kids, another weather joke. <laughs> well, I did not. I didn't say anything about the weather. Oh, pardon me, Al. I got last week's script. Yeah, I'll say you did. <laughs> Friends, as I was saying... Come in. Good evening, uh, gentlemen. Mr. Pierce, it is rumored around town that you are mad at Wayne Nile. Darn right. Well, I have brought with me some new announcers for you to try out. Good. First, I'd like to have you meet Captain Horatio Novacord, the great big game hunter who tells adventure stories over the air. Well, oh, bring him in. Let's take a look at him. Maybe he'll do. Uh, how do you do, sir? Oh, I'm fine, thank you all. How are you, Captain Novacord? Just a minute here. I think your name is Novacord. <laughs> My name is Novacord? Yes. <laughs> what a funny name. <laughs> oh, wait a minute here. Uh, uh, let, let us get back to business. I understand you're quite a wild game hunter. Is that correct? Oh, yes, yes. Raw, raw. Well, once I was trudging through the jungles of Africa, when suddenly I came upon a ferocious liar. <laughs> but I wasn't afraid. I just walked up to that lion and cut his tail off with my knife. His tail? Trying to cut off his head. Somebody had already cut off his head. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? There was no head on his shoulders. No, I'm beginning to think there's no head on your shoulders either. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, and when I saw the lion's mate, the female lion sleeping in the bushes. You saw the female lion. lion in the bushes, yes. Oh, yes, yes, the female lion. So I sneaked up, and I put a handkerchief in her mouth. What for? Oh, just for a gag. Now, wait. <laughs> well, now, look, just for another gag, I can't use you. Oh, well, no. well, if you don't like him, Mr. Pierce, I have another announcer here who has been conducting a morning exercise program. Well, what, what, what was that morning exercise program? Morning exercise program. That ought to be interesting. Yes, an inspiration to the athletic world. A man who is a powerhouse of dynamic energy. That man mountain of strength, softer, pepper, upper. Well, I'm glad to know you, Doctor. I'd like to hear just how you conduct your morning exercise program. In fact, I think we need a little pep on this program right now anyway. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to give you one of my <laughs> My purpose in life is to show others how to get to exercise. <laughs> my motto is upon your soul. I come out of the air to some people. To get them on their toes. To revive their spanking energy. Well, what program were you on? Wheeze the people? <laughs>
one by one, slowly revolving the daisies in the left hand until all the petals are plucked. A few weeks of this exercise, but you will find you have developed your strength. You must to try a much harder exercise, such as uh, snapping these fingers uh, like this. <laughs> hey, look. Hey, the doctor's fainted. Help me pick him up, somebody. Doctor, speak to me. What, what's happened? Uh, I'm afraid I, I am sick of myself. <laughs> Well, we'll carry on further and see what luck we can have. Tonight, Carl Hoff and his boys play when Yuba plays the tuba down in Cuba or something. And just to be different, the arrangement features Rachel Mendez and his trumpet. <laughs> Thank you, Carl, and thank you, Rachel. Carl, did you know that I was a G-man? He can't! Now he's a G-man! <laughs> now, look, it's not going to be a... No kidding, Carl. Well, every time I eat gold pineapple gems, or even think about them, I say, gee, they sure do taste good. And all over the country, folks who have tasted this new pineapple treat are telling others how good gold pineapple gems are. Let me say a few words about them. The gold people take juicy, sun-ripened pineapples, big perfect ones, and cut them in chunks that fit a teaspoon. And here's an interesting thing. The gold people discovered a special way of cutting the fruit across the grain so that when you bite into one of those gems, you get more flavor and more enjoyment from the juicy, tender goodness of the pineapple. Sounds good, doesn't it? In fact, I can just taste that swell flavor now. I wish I could describe it to you, but of course I just can't. You've got to taste those gems for yourself to know what I'm trying to say. Try a dish of them for dessert, or put them in a salad, 
And you just watch the youngsters go for double pineapple jam. Give them all they want, many helpings as they ask for. So remember, friends, to put gems on your market list. G-E-M-S. Bell Pineapple Gems, the new treat from Hawaii. Lily! Oh, Lily! Well, friends, it, it used to be Harry, then it was Junior, and now it's Lily, Arlene Harris's name. Uh, from the tone of Arlene's voice, it looks like Lily is number one on her fit parade tonight. Lily! Lily, where are you? Can't you hear that phone ringing? Yes, Miss Harris, I heard it. Well, if you heard it, why don't you come downstairs? What for? I can hear everything on the extension upstairs. <laughs> Fine maid. If I didn't know her so much back pay, believe me, I'd let her go. Hello. Hello, Maisie. Oh, I'm as busy as a bird dog. Yes, we're giving a dinner party tonight for our next door neighbors. No, the Perkins. The Perkins, dear. Well, the butcher boy's been needing their meat here every day for a week, and the least we can do is invite them over and let them see what they've been paying for. <laughs> Oh, you remember the Perkins, Maisie. Yes, you do, honey. He's that little skinny fellow. Oh, he's nothing but skin and bone. Don't be silly. Their dog buried him three times in the backyard by mistake. <laughs> well, that's one of Harry's gags. How about who? Mrs. Perkins. Oh, don't. You've got something there. She's just the opposite. You know, big and fat. And of all things, Maisie, she wears one of those strapless evening gowns. Oh, you ought to pick it. Every time she wears it, she looks like she's taking a bath in a barrel. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Oh, for heaven's sake. Did you hear that, Maisie? That's my maid. I'll bet a cookie there goes the rest of my Chinese dishes. Well, she didn't think I had any Chinese dishes. What do you think I've been going to the wrong Chinese theater for every week? <laughs> yeah. I'll call you back later, Maisie. I've got to get out in the kitchen and see what Millie's doing. Goodbye, dear. <laughs> Millie! Lily! Yes, Miss Harris. What goes on here? Oh, for goodness sake. Now, who broke my best butter dish? The cat, Miss Harris. The cat? What cat? And we got a cat? No, we haven't. <laughs> Have we got a dog? No, we haven't a dog. Is I getting wrong? <laughs> <laughs> no. Believe me, I'm getting warm under the collar. I think I should hire another maid. What you want to hire another maid for? Look, and you can do it on your life, too. Well, that's not a bad idea. Now, look here, Lily. This dinner party tonight is going to be a very formal affair. Yes, sir. And I don't want you ushering in any bill collectors like you did the last time. No, ma'am. Now, remember that. Now, when my friends arrive, Lily, what do you do? I open the door. Oh, no, no, no. You don't open the door, Lily. You open that little panel in the door. I put the little panel in the door. Yes. Miss Harris, where is your friend, Pigeon? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not pigeons. But when you see them east, you'll think they're vultures. <laughs> well, I was close. Say, Lily, do I smell something burning? Could that be the rose? No, ma'am, it couldn't be the rose. Are you sure? Yes, ma'am, so that burned up an hour ago. <laughs> The roast burned up. For goodness sake, 43 cents a pound. Well, thank heavens we still have the soup. Mm-mm, Miss Harris, we ain't got no soup. What do you mean we haven't any soup? Well, I had to use something to put out the fire. Oh, <laughs> first the beef, then the soup, then my dish. Good night. Now I've got to go to the delicatessen and get something for my cup. Selling imported soaps, perfumes, and bath salts from door to door and getting a big bang out of it. Uh, bang away, Elmer, and good luck in the commercial world. Say, bang, go back to Homie's house today. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. Well, how'd you do, Grandpa? Uh, I'm selling beauty preparation, everything from A to Z. A? Uh, from A to Z. Uh, A? Yeah, it's a Z. Uh, where is the lady of the house? Eh? Well, never mind. I'll go around the 
back to Z. <laughs> Confucius say, never admit defeat in front, pick up defeat and go around the back. <laughs> oh gosh, uh, well, there's the lady now well, doing her washing in the big tub, the poor thing. How'd you do, lady? How do you do, lady? Lady, I'm selling... Don't bother me now. Can't you see I'm up to my neck in soap suds? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, up to your neck in soap suds. That's going to leave a ring. <laughs> Dear, it's a terrible job washing my husband's winter underwear. Well, uh, Confucius say he who washes winter underwear will find it a long, drawn-out job. <laughs> I just work, work, work. Ever since the honeymoon, I've had my nose to the grindstone. It must have been a duke when you first got married. <laughs> uh, lady, I've got here a fine line, a complete line of beauty preparation for a beautiful lady like you. Oh, do you really think I'm beautiful? No, that's just part of my line. <laughs> well, I, I need some kind of soap to keep my hands from getting red. Well, I sold some of this soap to a lady down the street who had red hands. Did it help her? Uh, no, I found out later she was an Indian. <laughs> well, I haven't got time to talk to you. I must finish this family washing. Oh, lady, don't work so hard. Please let me help you with your washing. Oh, do you mean it? Sure, I'll do this all the time. I'll, I'll go around and wash people's clothes. Yeah, and I help with the housework. Let me do the work. Let, you just sit right down there and I'll scrub the clothes out for you. Oh, you're very kind. Right. Now, uh, That's right. Use plenty of elbow grease. Oh, gosh. This sure is fun. This... And this is the first time my hands have been cleaned this month. <laughs> uh, now, wash out those things in the corner of the tub. Okay, lady. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> well, wh what's the matter? <laughs> oh, darling. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Uh, lady, how old is your baby? <laughs> Let me ask you, how would you like to buy some pleasures at Paris bath salts? Now, I'm too busy, but you might be able to sell something to Grandpa. He's getting ready to take his bath now. Where is he, in the kitchen? No, he's too old to stand up in the sink. <laughs> You'll find him in the bathroom. Oh, gee, thanks, lady. I'll go and see if I can sell him some of this stuff. Maybe I can do a, maybe a quick sale here. Uh, Grandpa. Hey, where are you, Grandpa? Hey! Oh, there he is in the bedroom. Uh, what are you doing, Grandpa? I'm getting ready to shave, and I can't find my mug. Well, that's good under your whiskers. <laughs> uh, Grandpa, uh, you get undressed there, and I'll go and fill the tub. I want you to try some of my pleasures to Paris bath salts. <laughs> Don't forget to put in my little rubber ducks in my tailbone. Sure, 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 sure. This will be fun. <laughs> How are you getting along with my bath in there, Sonny? Fine, Grandpa. I'll just put in some lilac water, some lavender crystals, and some carnation perfume. Well, how is it? It tastes fine. <laughs> well, out of the way, young man. I'm going to dive in the tub. Here I come. Yippee! <laughs> Grandpa, the, the tub's over here. <laughs> Darn, darn it, I can't understand it. I do it every time. <laughs> All right, uh, come on, Grandpa. Hop in and take your bath. Now, wait a minute, young man. What are you doing in the tub? I just wanted to see if the water was warm enough. <laughs> well, get out of there and scrub my back with that wire brush. Better not scrub the, uh, the back of your brush. Uh, Why not? Uh, it might tell you anywhere. <laughs> Oh, Grandpa, I want you to try some of these pleasures of Paris bath salts. I'll pour some in the tub. You'll like these. Now, look, just, there you are. Just kick your feet and watch the bubbles come up between your toes. Okay. Hey, 
Hey, there's something wrong here. I can't move my feet. Well, then go ahead and slice with your hands. Well, well Dad, man, but I can't move my hands either. I'm stuck here. I can't even move the muscle. That's funny. I better look at that box again. Oh, gosh. There, there's been a slight mistake. This isn't pleasure. It's a pair. Well, what is it? Plaster a pair. <laughs> What's the idea of trying out all these announcers? And what's the idea when Niles is sending your wife around here to take your place? I'm not going to put up with that sort of thing. I'm going to continue with the announcers' contest until I find what I want. Oh, but, Al, i got a swell idea. Hmm. After you hear it, I'll bet you'll forget all about your announcers' contest. Well, well I won't uh, promise to forget the contest, but I will listen for a moment to any new idea you might have. Well, I was thinking about the tough job it is for most of us to wake up these gray winter mornings. Even at breakfast, it seems that our appetite is still asleep. Now, here's where gold pineapple juice from Hawaii can be of real help. A big glass full when you get up in the morning or when you sit down at the table pleasantly wakes up the sleepy appetite. The first thing you know, you're really enjoying breakfast. When, as mad as I am at you, I've got to admit that you've got something there. Gold pineapple juice is a grand waker-upper for grown-ups and children, too. It's the pure juice of luscious... Pineapple ripened to perfection in glorious lion sunshine. And it's a good source of vitamins B and C and contains vitamin A. And when you consider the speed with which all of us have to get going in the morning, here's something most important about dough pineapple juice. It is high and quickly available food energy. Keep this in mind during the day when you take a moment's rest at home or when you drop into a soda fountain. For refreshment, drink a glass of dough pineapple juice from Hawaii. That's very good, Wynn. Friends, when I announce uh, that Marie Green and her merry men are going to sing Indian Love Call, I bet you're all wondering how they're going to treat it. I know Rudolph Thimble, who's listening, will never recognize it the way he originally wrote it, but I think he'll enjoy it. Well, here is a real ultra-modern arrangement of it. <laughs>
Bill. You're a great and a merry man, and I know you enjoy them. We look forward to them next week. Hey, Al. Yeah? You're not mad at me, are you? Mm-hmm. You're not really going through without announcing this contest after the way I did that last commercial, are you? Well, in a way, you kind of got me on the spot there because you really did a fine job and had something good to talk about. I like that idea, but as far as announcers are concerned, I think we ought to go through with the original idea of the contest before finally making up my mind. Come in. Good evening, gentlemen. My name is Joe Forte. I used to be the announcer on the Bob Hope program, but I was replaced by Bill Goodwin. Replaced by Bill Goodwin? Why? No money? No. No baby. I see. Well, now, look, you just stand over there until the other contestants get here. We will see. Uh, come in. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Don't you tell me that you're an announcer, Mr. Ketzel. Uh, could be, yes. <laughs> you know, I used to be an announcer on a guest program. Professor Cordell. No, Professor Quiz. Now, wait a minute. Professor Quiz is not a gas program. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. He asks the questions, and the people gas the answers. Oh, I see. Uh, I am sorry, but you don't speak such good English. No, I don't speak such good English. Why, young man, I went to the biggest university in England, Oxford and Cambridge. How about Eaton? I'll have a hamburger, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I don't mean that. Well, anyway, I'm an educated man. I speak three languages. Three languages? Yes. What are they? English and bubble talk. <laughs> you certainly are a linguist. Yeah, man, I speak French, too. Oh, French? Yes. Well, say a few words in French. Uh, adios, muchacho. <laughs> no, 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 that's Spanish. How do you like that? I speak Spanish, too. <laughs> All right, fellas, now we'll have our contest right now. See who really is the fastest announcer. Yes. Mr. Forte, you can be number one. Thank you very much, Mr. Booth. I certainly do my best to win the contest, fairly, and conduct myself as a gentleman. That's fine, Mr. Forte. Now, Carl, you can be in the contest also. You're number two. Thank you very much, Mr. Booth. I can do my best to win the contest, fairly, and conduct myself as a gentleman. That's fine, Mr. Hall. And now, Mr. Kitzel, you'll be number three. I didn't understand. I didn't understand what you said, Mr. Kitzel. Did you understand what the other said? Oh, yeah. So that's it. <laughs> well, all right. All right, now, men, here are the rules of the contest. This is for speed and enunciation. I want each one of you to read these lines. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. How many pecks of pickle peppers did Peter Piper pick? Now, when I call your name, start reading. When you hear the bell, you stop. Just, 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 let me understand this. We, uh, we stop when you call our name, yes. and we stop when we hear the bell. That's right. All right. And don't forget to take a deep breath. All right, now, Mr. Forte. <laughs> Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. How many pecks of pickle peppers? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. Mr. Hall. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. How many pecks of pickle peppers? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. Mr. Kissel. <laughs> Mr. Forte. <laughs> Mr. Kissel. Mr. Forte. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle pickle peppers. How many pecks of pickle peppers? Mr. Hall. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. How many pecks of pickle peppers? Mr. Kessel. Now, just a second, just a second. That's not fair. You got to give me a chance. Mr. Kessel, I know, uh, but I'm afraid, I'm afraid you'd never make a good announcer. You haven't even had any experience. Experience? Don't get so happy to pop it here. Well, I've been an announcer for Valley, Kelly, Peter McGee and Mary, Laboris, Philip Morris, and I wanted to Boris. You can say them in a treble thing to hit the dream, dream, and all of the Not to mention I'm a Sam, Sam, and Sam, Pineapple, German, one man, Sam, Adam, Hap, Dick and Tap, this and that, and Fire, Fire, Chap, Trap, Seed, Information, Please, Lip, Lip, Seed, and Professor, Quiz, Belgium, Belgium, but now I am Fork and Grab, Up, I don't know now what to think. Uh, I think uh, Wen Lau's a pretty good announcer after all. He has more on the ball than all the rest of them put together. But I'm going to have a little talk with Gene Alfie first and find out how we stand on contact matters. So folks, next Wednesday night, we have a big surprise in store for you. The biggest surprise for you as he was for Joe Lewis. As our guest star, we'll have that great fighter from South America, Arturo Godoy. And by the way, 
A poor Godoy is appearing in person at the Paramount Theater in Los Angeles for one week starting tomorrow. And I know you all want to get your only chance to see him there at the show. But friends, don't forget, for a guest star in your home every day, a permanent guest star, we give you that delicious gold pineapple juice from the lobby. Good night, all. Wendell Hall speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.